Okay, in between videos, all I did was download this mushroom model from the asset store. I believe the people who made it go by the name Manufacturer K4. So if you're looking for it, it's available on the asset store. Let's go ahead and move the gem out of the way. We'll take the mushroom. We'll drag and drop it into our scene. Now, what's going to happen is this mushroom already has a box collider, already set as a trigger. And because of that, uh, it's all set to detect a collision or a collision to be detected with it. And that's what's going to happen. So I haven't made any of the changes. The, blade, the beam is going to move forward. And you can see it's gathering, which we don't want. We do not want it to be gathering the emerald. So what we're going to do is in the harvest script, we're going to start looking for the object name. So in the on trigger stay, what we're going to do is we're going to say if other, and other refers to this. We're saying there's a collision with other. So if other dot name equals equals gem, because that's what's named up here, then we want to do gem units plus one. If other dot name, however, is shroom one, then we need a new variable. Public static int shroom units equals zero. And then we want that new variable to be here. Shroom units plus one. And in debug, what we're going to do is we're going to do, we're going to modify this so we can see not just the total, but the name of the total. So gem plus, and even though it's a plus sign, it's really concatenating. In other words, you're not adding these two together so much as you're appending one to the other. suppose we could just put the name in here. Okay, so quote gem and quote plus gem units plus quote a couple spaces shrooms. I'll also put a couple spaces after that as well. End quote plus shroom units. So the word gem and then this variable, some spaces, this word and then this variable. We only had one variable before, so we knew it was the right one. Now we want to demonstrate that you've got two different totals. Actually, a brief typo here. This should be, sorry, it's shrooms1. Sorry about that. So it's got to be exact. This has to match this. So it's shrooms with an S. And we'll save. And there we go. So now gem is zero, but shrooms is increasing. So just like that, you've now added the ability to determine what is being mined and then changing the corresponding value based on that. So you're collecting gems here. You're collecting shrooms here. So just like that, you have built on what you already had before, and now you can uh, collect a, a variety of objects, of resources. So what now? OK, so there's uh, two objects now. And I'm not going to add any more, because now that you've had, now that there's two, it's just rinse and repeat. You add, if you want a third thing, you add a third variable. And you add a third if statement, and then a fourth, a fifth, a sixth. Just rinse and repeat. Now that you have two, you just keep doing the same process over and over again to get more. 
So, what we want to do now is we want to limit how many you can get. So, we want to let the object know when it's been depleted. And there's a couple ways to do it. You can give it its own variable and the variable gets depleted. Or you can simply do a one-off me uh, message and say, okay, destroy now based on time or based on something else. So what we can do, so let's go ahead and create a new script and the script is gonna be put on the individual resource. We talked about that there's a risk of doing that, but it's also gonna be a very small script. It's basically just gonna track um, when in, uh, how much it's been depleted. So create C sharp, and we'll call this deplete. And we'll just call it deplete. So we're going to click on the shrooms one, and we'll put on deplete. We'll click on the gem, and we'll put on deplete. Gonna open up the deplete script. And we're gonna create a new variable. Public. Now we don't want this to be static because we want each and every object to have its own value, kind of like its own HP. And you can create a single variable, but every object that has the script will has it will have its own unique um, instance of that variable. So uh, public int, uh, let's just call it resource HP, because effectively that's what we're doing. And we'll set it at, at 100. We'll give that a save. And I'm just going to take a moment to demonstrate this. So gem. There's the resource HP. We'll click on the shroom, and there's the resource HP. So watch this. We'll change that to 50. Maybe when we want it to be more rare. The gem is still at 100. So that's what I mean. Even though we've only defined one um, variable in one script, because it's not static, every single instance of that script is creating a different variable and one does not change the other. So what we'll do is in that deplete script, we're going to put a similar um, on trigger stay collider other. And what we'll do in here is just, in here, just as right now we're not using any time, we're just simply doing it frame by frame, we'll have that HP be depleted by exactly the same amount. So it will be uh, minus equals one. So resource HP minus equals one. And then in the update section, we have to self-destruct. So if resource HP is less than one. Destroy game object. Okay, so pretty straightforward. As a collision is going on, its HP is getting depleted. And then in the update section, this is constantly checking to make sure that HP has not reached zero. Once it does, it gets destroyed and you can no longer collect anymore because the object is gone. So with such a system, you have to be careful because you actually have two separate variables separately tracking. So that gets a little dangerous because there could be a glitch. But again, you're putting the basics into place. You could always put more controls in later to make sure that there aren't exploits. But even fully released games have exploits. We've seen it. OK, 
Okay, so let's run this. And there you go, it got destroyed. Uh, we collected exactly 50. And we said that at the beginning, the shroom has 50. So, so far, so good. Pretty solid. Uh, it did not give us too little. Did not give us too much. Made it to 100 and then it got destroyed. So, pretty solid. The limitation, though, is that, again, it's based on frame, not on um, timer. So if you're locking the frame rate, it's probably okay. But if you're not locking the frame rate, then uh, eventually we're going to want to have a counter going on uh, to make sure that this would uh, mine at exactly the same rate, regardless of what system it's running on.